go. Every <laughs> all right. Hi, everybody. Um, nice to meet you all. Uh, <laughs> so, ah, so much recursion. Uh, nope. Oops, oops. Okay. Do not want that to play. Um, <laughs> so, uh, there's a couple different things I guess we wanted to talk about today. So, um, uh, Tony asked me here to kind of introduce people to live streaming, live stream coding, uh, which I had done a couple of times. Um, and the getting the setup right is actually a little tricky. And so, um, you know, I think there's a couple different ways to interface with me um, during the chat. So either through the, the Gitter or I'll, I'll show you how to start up the, um, the Twitch chat and how to interface with that. So why don't we go ahead and do that now, um, just to see. So uh, one of the things about live streaming coding, and feel free to like interrupt me and ask questions and stuff, uh, <laughs> is that um, it, there's like a couple of hooks that are sort of not necessarily obvious, um, especially on Linux. I think the story on Windows is a lot better because a lot of people stream games and stuff from Windows. and so. It's a little more streamlined, like for example, this autoplay video. But okay, so the first thing, um, let's see if anyone's in the chat. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Doesn't look like anyone is in the stream chat, but um, you can feel free to use the Gitter, I guess, too. Um, so basically, what um, what you want to do if you want to, if you've ever been interested in live streaming, <laughs> is to, uh, ah, there we go, uh, Tony's in the chat, um, is uh, obviously first make a Twitch account. Um, and so this is pretty normal and standard and it's, it's not so hard. Um, uh, but, <laughs> um, ooh, I'm omnipresent, wow. So one of the things you probably noticed is that there's a delay. Um, and that delay is kind of annoying. It's about, it depends where people are streaming from, but it's about 30 seconds um, or so. Maybe sometimes it's less, sometimes it can be around 10 seconds. The delay between me and my own machine seems to be about four seconds. Um, so it, it's a little interesting if you're getting feedback on what you're doing, because there is going to be that delay. But um, well, first things first, let's go ahead and bust out the chat from this window. So um, there's just this little pop-up thing here. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and put that on this other window here where we'll be doing the coding, I guess, to just some, for some example coding. Uh, uh, okay, so unfortunately what happens <laughs> is Twitch does not really provide a nice way of just saying, like, here's a button, go ahead and record 
or stream my computer or stream my window or, or whatever. Um, and that's kind of for a couple of reasons. One, that they don't have a native client on Linux. Um, and I don't think they have one on Mac necessarily. Um, but uh, all of the video codecing and streaming and processing sort of requires a native, uh, a native client for speed. And so what you end up having to do is they actually, <laughs> um, and their native client is like this Twitch desktop thing, um, uh, which isn't something that we really have available to us as, uh, at least if you're on, not on Windows. Um, but, whoops, whoops. But there's a lot of other uh, options available to us. Uh, and, one, and most of them are actually fairly well supported. So the one that I like to use is called OBS, which is this open broadcaster software. And so this is a cross-platform tool for recording. Uh, you can record any window. Um, you can take in multiple streams, so you can add audio. Uh, you can take in multiple video streams if you want. And you can either record basically an MP4 right on your machine, or you can stream. And so um, OBS is great, especially since their two point, uh, or their sort of latest release, their 21 release. Um, it's just, it's awesome. Um, so yeah, you can also stream up to YouTube. But one of the things they specifically support is, um, is Twitch. So just to show you what it looks like, I've got it on my ninth desktop up here. I'm using awesome, by the way. So you can see the infinite recursion <laughs> uh, video thing over here. Um, but And I, I've got the start streaming button. <laughs> but what you can do, right, so down here in this sector, hopefully it's big enough for you to see, um, you can modify these the streams that you have so i think i can turn this off let's see uh, maybe once you're streaming you can't modify how this works so that it's not great for um for actually being able to um uh yeah i don't want to change any of those things um so that's my audio stream. This is my screen capture. Um, and then this is my webcam, right? So I can kind of move around where I want these, where I want the, uh, where I want things to be placed. Now, personally, I found the upper right for coding is kind of the best because that's the place you're looking at the least often. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think there's a degree of, doing what you want to do um, there uh, in terms of configuring things. And so, you, oh yeah, here you can see like, uh, I've got my, I can change my input camera, etc. So this just requires a degree of exploration um, in order to figure out like how you might want your setup to look and everything. Now you'll notice that I'm actually streaming my whole desktop. Um, and I could, I could have configured that to stream uh, simply a single window, but I chose not to do that because so often when I'm coding, right, I'm switching between my browser and um, uh, and like a bunch of terminal windows and all that stuff. And so it's there's a lot of uh, <laughs> you know there's a lot of things going on, and and I don't necessarily want um, I don't want my I don't want to be confined to just a single window. Now, maybe that's something that uh, we, you might want to do if you have like uh, one of these muxing tools that lets you do, have multiple, um, you know, multiple screens, <laughs> uh, multiple terminals inside of a single window. But uh, it's just not how I operate because you know, I, like I want people to see that I'm going on GitHub and you know, making pull requests and things like that. Now. The downside <laughs> to this is, of course, you're streaming your whole freaking window. And so I'm in a private tab here in Firefox, um, which is like, a, you know, and sort of most of the time I use Chrome on this particular machine, um, although I'm moving to an all Firefox world, but we'll, we'll see. So, um, you know, you kind of want things locked down uh, when you're actually streaming. Okay, so let's get into the tricky bit. So once you've created your account, 
Um, uh, the way Twitch and OBS know about each other is a little funny. So what happens is uh, basically you kind of get a private key uh, that is embedded in a URL. So um, I might have to change this uh, eventually so people don't stream to my channel. <laughs> um, but I'll do that afterwards since this is just a demo. And they're, uh, okay, this is the other thing. Their <laughs> interface for their settings is like pretty annoying <laughs> in, in a way. Like you kind of have to, um, there's like a lot of different things to explore. Oh, come on. Um, so I think it's under channel and videos is the right one. And then channels, nope, that's priority. Um, uh, no, this is just normal settings. They also change it somewhat frequently. Ah, so yeah, sorry. So you've got to go to the Twitch dashboard. This is right. <laughs> and then I think it's under um, permissions probably. Uh, no, it's not under permissions. It's under channel. Um, no. Uh, analytics. Sorry. You only have to do this setup step once, so it's, uh, and it's been like a couple months since I've last seen it. So, where is it? Uh, ch channel. Yeah, sorry about this. I think it's under, under live. Um, no, where is it? Uh, oh, is it under? No, 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 no. Come on. Uh, I think, shoot, I should have looked this up beforehand. Um, sorry, let me see, let me see what it's called. So on the OBS side, <laughs> um, you, if you go to, um, I think it's profile or settings or something, let me show you, uh, yeah, it's, maybe it's under profile, come on. Uh, yeah, so it's, where is it? Settings, here we go. Um, so under the stream settings, there is uh, various keys that you can set. So here under the, serv under the Twitch service, oops. Um, sorry, I needed to change the size of that. Um, you can set these various parameters and then, uh, well, or normally you can. <laughs> um, probably not while I'm actually streaming, unfortunately. Um, and so basically what you have to do is you have to select Twitch from the services and then uh, paste in this uh, secret URL that you get from one of these, uh, yeah, one of these from, from Twitch itself. I'm trying to remember what it's called exactly. So if anyone knows or remembers channel settings, post. Um, let me just look really quick. Um, Twitch OBS. There's a couple of guides out there. Uh, nope, you guys haven't. Uh, yeah, great. Doesn't have a translation for English. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, OBS. Oh yeah, it's your stream key. That's what it's called. Find it on your dashboard. We've been to the dashboard like five times now and I can't find it. That, that's what I, oh, okay. It's stream preferences. So you have to do this and then you have to, um, uh, oh, then you have to click this stream key. That's what's really annoying. And then you say show key, um, which uh, 
I'm not going to click this <laughs> right now, but basically you get a URL and then you have to take that stream key URL and paste it into, um, into this little box in, um, in the settings of OBS and stream. And if you paste it there, um, then the start streaming button will, s down here, will actually go ahead and start working and you'll stream directly to Twitch. And your that's how your channel becomes live. So, um, yeah, it's pretty annoying to like find this, right? Like I think their UI is actually not the greatest here. Um, but, uh, but that's like that's basically how you set it up. Now, um, I always say I would actually this box is unclicked by default, but I would go ahead and click it. So it says this is the store past broadcasts, um, and so this gives you basically 14 days of storage for every, all of your streams, which is really useful because otherwise I think it stores it for like 30 minutes or or basically no time. It's kind of streamed and gone, um, and um, if you do that, you can go ahead and uh, once it stores the video, if you've connected it with YouTube, you can directly upload videos from Twitch to YouTube without having to download the MP4 yourself. And so if you want sort of more permanent storage, um, you're able to do that uh, very, very easily. Um, so let's see, where is an example of that? So I think you need to go to channel oops no not channel <laughs> um it's again in settings or dashboard or something um ah uh, yeah so set in settings there's connections and there's a lot of different things you can connect to right so you can connect to various different services so here right i've connected it to youtube and twitter um but not facebook and so um once you have that once you've got the youtube connection your videos will end up, oops, no, um, hopefully if we get back to the channel dashboard sometime, oh, that's, the, the web interface is really, leaves a lot to be desired, in my opinion, um, uh, for the actual, uh, for the actual uh, streamers. Um, so, um, right, so we, there's this videos section that your videos will get exported to. And so you can either save them or delete them. So this was actually, I think this one was my test case from earlier today. Um, and you can go ahead and, you know, you can either download it since I clicked that button to store for 14 days, or you can export it. So I'll go ahead and export this and it'll export it to YouTube. Um, and you can change the, um, you know, you can change various settings. So this is just a test. Okay. Um, and then it'll export and it'll appear on YouTube uh, in, the, in the near future. So assuming I'm logged into YouTube and I go to, oh, this is, uh, should have logged in already. Okay. Um, and then I go to, you know, sort of my, um, my uploads, which I think is here, uh, or they've got a dashboard as well, which sometimes little, oh, here on my channel, you can see, um, yeah, oh, you can see it already uploaded. So this video is now on YouTube as well. So. Uh, it works pretty well, actually. Um, once it every once you get everything set up, which is kind of annoying, <laughs> um, it works pretty well. So uh, the key things I think are are OBS and then getting that putting that stream link into OBS and getting everything sort of set up like you want and making sure the audio works and and all that stuff. Okay, so. Um, now that we have that, um, we can go, because it's my 20 minute rambly <laughs> uh, version of how you set the system up, which, uh, believe me, believe it or not, took me like several hours to figure out. 
Um, and I probably should write a blog post, but got other things going on. So uh, that's why I'm doing this stream, because, you know, meta. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, that is cool that um, it, it streams. Oh, um, uh, streams Twitch. So, uh, all right, so now to go ahead and code. So uh, does, if anyone had any suggestions for something that they wanted to, um, uh, wanted me to code, that would be awesome. Otherwise, I guess I'll just do something uh, kind of on conch to, uh, as an example. So I like putting the chat window up here. <laughs> um, but hi, walkability. Um, <laughs> uh, just because it's, uh, it's nice. So let's go ahead and go to GitHub. Um, there's a couple of open issues that I know about. Um, I think I saw solve the easy one today. So um, let's check out conch just as an example. Um, also, you kind of want, I've noticed too, um, <laughs> you want the really high, you will like basically want the, the size of the thought and everything really big so that it comes through on some of the uh, feeds a little better. So um, if you're having, um, uh, if you're having trouble uh, figuring out, or, you know, so you want like the low quality streams to, uh, to be able to see what you're writing. And apparently I'm supposed to be choosing cabinet knobs, which is actually what I'm supposed to be doing uh, probably right now. Uh, so, uh, but, okay. So let's see, on conch, um, got a couple of issues. Oh, so I've got a pull request open and feel free to jump in and kind of ask me what we're doing or, or what, um, what the situation is, or if you want me to work on some other project, that's fine too. Um, but uh, basically, at the end of this pull request, we got um, a message from Gil to say, um, you know, we basically want a deprecation notice because we're removing a feature. Um, and so we'll go ahead and add that deprecation notice. So, um, Let's go ahead and cd into conch. And so the other thing that you've noticed, hopefully, <laughs> um, uh, is that I'm like talking a lot. And so that is something that is a little awkward. That was a little awkward the first couple of times I'm doing it because there's that's my contractor in the stream. No, <laughs> uh, that, is my, uh, that is my special lady friend, life partner. So, uh, <laughs> who is demanding cabinet knobs, uh, or requesting cabinet knobs, uh, which is a low, which is a recent obsession. So, um, <laughs> uh, so uh, probably flooring and a bathroom on the first floor is next, I think. But <laughs> uh, okay, so. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add a deprecation notice somewhere um, in the event that this exists. So uh, what's the branch name? Let's go ahead and look at that. Um, oh, the branch is called noconf, so that's nice. It's easy. Um, uh, so git checkout noconf. Um, uh, yeah, so talking the whole time is a little, uh, was a little awkward the first time, but I think it really adds value because then you're not just sitting and waiting for a lot of dead time. Um, another problem that I've had in the past is, um, is having music. So like one of my, I ac was accidentally playing some music in the background like I normally do when I code. And it just, it was like the video got flagged because there was all this copyrighted music, even though you actually couldn't hear it in the stream. Um, the, for some reason it got encoded in the stream and so Google, YouTube picked it up. 
Uh, do you think GUI tools or CLI are more effective when streaming? Um, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I think that's that's really interesting from a uh, from sort of uh, what do you call it? And it's kind of an epistemic question, and um, y you know, so it's like. I want to I want to code the way I code. So, um, and if I'm trying to do something like pair programming or any of the educational so aspect of this, like I want people to see how I'm working in my environment when I'm normally working, and um, I do not normally work in a GUI, um, and so I think that would be disingenuous, right? It would not be kind of the correct thing for me to do. Now, that being said, there are people who really like the, the GUI interfaces and, you know, people like PyCharm and, and you know, there's um, uh, Eclipse and all that stuff. Um, I can't stand it necessarily. Uh, but if that's the way you work and you want to show someone your environment, I think that's the, the right thing to do. Um, now, I've talked to some other professors about like this is a method for walk, interacting with students when they're not, you know, when they can't necessarily be physically present, not necessarily classroom students, but research students, right? Like you want to see what they're doing and they want to see what you're doing. And so this is a potentially like really good way to have a communication with them. Um, so there's kind of a pedagogical, that was the word I was looking for earlier. There's a pedagogical value to being able to work in your, your environment. I probably beat that horse to death, but that's the um, uh, that's that's my answer. <laughs> um, and so I think OBS like really allows that. I've actually used OBS to teach a flipped classroom kind of thing before, um, and so uh, that was also valuable. Uh, okay, so um, let's see. So we want. I think the file that we want is like the environment file and um, we want to check eventually um, yeah so what did so Dale said GUIs can be busy so it can work if you organize your view properly um, yeah and I think that's true, right? So a large part of this is getting your view down properly, right? Because it's not necessarily the sort of thing like a video game where like if you lose a few bits of information in some locality, right? Like you, you, if you're missing resolution, it doesn't necessarily matter so much. Here, the things that we're rendering aren't super complicated, right? It's just text. Um, but if people can't read that text, it's a big problem. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, right. So CL, that yeah, it, you're exactly right. Now, um, uh, there have been studies where if you take, uh, which are pr pretty, um, pretty interesting. Um, uh, so there are these studies where people say like, uh, if you take people who have never coded at all, um, and you do sort of a a blind test and you teach them either a CLI or you teach them a GUI, people's on-ramp time to learning a CLI and learning how to interact with the computer that way for totally naive users is much faster um, than teaching them a, than a GUI um, from nothing. It just so happens that like we all learned GUIs when we were, or many of us learned GUIs when we were really young. And so, um, uh, so this, that switching of modes to communicating with a computer via CLI is actually kind of uh, a little more difficult, um, or that is a larger barrier to entry than there would be from a naive user. Now, Gitter or Twitch Chat or um, IRC or I don't know, like this is a hard question, right? Like how do people want to communicate? And so I think that's kind of a, a thing with that, um, where it kind of depends on where your community is. And so um, uh, it's, it's a really interesting problem. I haven't really found anything that I like a lot. <laughs> and I've only, you know, I've, um, 
uh, I've only done a few of these um, in terms of, and I've tended to use the Twitch chat just because that's what's there and available. Um, so, uh, and yes, Tony, give me notebooks or give me, give me death. Yeah, if I was doing analysis, I would open up a notebook right now, and then you would see the notebook. Um, but I'm not doing analysis, so I'm just gonna, <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna code how I normally code. So, um, let's see. Uh, so we need to add a, um, oops, ah, oh, shoot. Oh, sorry. I broke my text editor and now I fixed it on my laptop, but I did not fix it here. Um, so let me fix it here. Well, what's different? Oh, this was some other stupid test, okay. Uh, oop, not dot dot. <laughs> Come on. Okay, git. Uh, I don't need to do anything, I just need to reinstall. Okay, now. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so dump the GUI, use notebooks. Uh, yeah, there is a C++ kernel. Which is it, I forget how that works. Is that does that use the root C plus uh, plus interactive like shell thing? Uh, okay. Well, all right. So what was this? We basically want to test if a file exists and then to tell people that they shouldn't use it. So um, <laughs> let's go ahead and kind of maybe reinstate this function uh, a bit even though we're not going to reinstate where it's called. Um, oh, maybe we, we should reinstate where it's called, uh, but in a slightly different way. Okay. So. Um, yeah. Do you guys use a lot of C++? Is that something you do? I'm curious. Like my, I have to use it for work a lot right now, but I would call it less than my favorite language. So, conch config, yep, yeah, okay, come back. Oop. Gotta make sure the tabs are, Oop. no, ah. Okay, and then go ahead and call this. We'll see if it exists. So I'll say if look, config file exists and issue warning. We probably want to issue a a real warning will issue like some fancy conch warning because that's what we're doing here. Okay. Uh, so uh, if os path dot is file. So this other function just returns the file name, so then we're going to check if it's a file, um, and then if that's true, um, well, we probably want to keep the name around, actually. So, we'll give it some old fig file name. So one thing that I wish we had in this whole system that we don't in terms of pair programming is that the delay time is so is so long that it like kind of makes the pair programming harder like you don't you can't like instantly find a if you if you see an error it's kind of hard to just instantly say there's an error so i also kind of wonder about possibly having um like a voice chat come in um you know like you have a hangouts voice chat or something come in from the side and then people can talk to you that way. Um, oh, 
quant stack. Oh, okay. Interesting. This is the... Whoa. Oh, he uses Clang. Interesting. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Conch history and context. Okay. Uh, so, what is Conch? Let me go to the website. So, it's X-O-N-S-H. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, sorry, let me, that is, if, uh, if I know anything about that kind of thing, very funny. Uh, <laughs> so, conch is a, um, it's a shell language, uh, you know, get the, get the joke. Um, so it is a superset of Python 3, and then it adds some kind of normal, shlang bash kind of primitives uh, to the language, but only enough to get the job done. Um, so it's all Python and the nice parts of bash. So, uh, and the nice parts of fish and the nice parts of Z shell and sort of the nice parts of all the other shells that are out there. Um, and so it's actually what I've been using this whole time. So a bash, so the terminal kind of looks like this. Um, like you would expect. Uh, and, you know, you can run commands and everything works fine, but you can also do every Python expression that's out there. Ooh, let me get a read line shell. Uh, or sorry, let me get a, a pomp toolkit shell. Uh, there we go. Because um, this has sort of some of the nicer autocomplete stuff in the, in the coloring. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you... Let me make it a little bigger too. So like you could say like x equals 10 and like, and now x like is truly an integer. Also, you'll notice that the output is highlighted, syntax highlighted, which is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> uh, and so, I mean, you can even do things like right here at the command line, uh, you can say like print, I don't know, whatever. Hello. Um, and then you can call F right there like you normally work. Uh, so <laughs> glad my, my jokes are occasionally funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's the only shell based on, whose name is based on a mis mispronunciation of another word, uh, of a shell word, shell word. Anyways, so yes, in terms of Jupyter, the con, the con shell actually does come, if we go here, with uh, with a Jupyter notebook um, uh, shell as well uh, in installed. So there's uh, oops. So ls conch uh, right. There's these. Um, we added the hooks for uh, a Jupyter kernel. So it's there. It exists. Um, we can go ahead and and look at it. It's based, it, since it's basically Python, we just subclass from the IPython kernel, um, which, you know, do what works. <laughs> um, so if I was to start up Jupyter here, um, I don't know which browser this would do. Um, so let's do no uh, browser. Um, And so uh, when you have conch installed, and, and by the way, conch you can install via pip or conda with, uh, with a conda forge package, et cetera. So um, up here in this corner, you know, you can choose to start a conch kernel. Um, and then, you know, you can just type in uh, commands. So, and you get <laughs> exactly back out what you should get, get out. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. Now, I think there might be a problem with saving this and restarting it as a conch kernel, because um, I think it might try to restart it as a Python kernel. Um, there's a Calypso kernel, like a Calypso conch interface out there, too, which I haven't played around with so much, because I kind of wanted the batteries included model rather than, um, or I like the batteries included model for the language. So the other thing about conch is that, um, uh, there is, uh, that's pretty neat. Oh, hi, Carol. Um, <laughs> uh, there is no, um, 
or there's no dependencies other than Python, uh, no hard dependencies. So there's a, a lot of uh, optional dependencies. Oh, and sorry, uh, do not use the conch.org. Someone sniped that from us. So it is actually the correct page is um, con.sh. Um, so don't use the other one because I think that those docs, you can see they're on 2.4. We've been lobbying to get these down for a while. Uh, if anyone could help with that, that'd be awesome. Uh, but Conch is currently on 6.1, so <laughs> please use the correct version of the docs. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So, um, and this try it, try it now thing is broken. So in the dev version of the docs and in the future, uh, we've actually removed it. So uh, people were abusing the the try it now server. So uh, until we get that figured out in a real way, uh, it, we just took it down. Um, uh, iPad getter and Twitch not so happy. Um, uh, so yeah, so Conch is pretty cool. It it get, lets you do a lot of things. Um, uh, some of, I guess I could go more into that now if people are interested, but. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of, there's a PyCon talk that I gave a couple years ago that goes into some of it, but there's like really interesting edge cases like ls-l, right? And so like, this is a valid Python expression, interestingly enough, right? Because <laughs> it's basic, it, you could, in Python, you would interpret that as ls minus minus l. And so how you disambiguate this as a bat, as a subprocess rather than a Python expression is like a pretty interesting um, uh, uh, exercise, but Conch manages to get it right like 99.99% of the time. And for those edge cases, you can actually always set this to a variable. So Conch just wraps what it what, do, what it does is it it wraps that in sort of this exclamation point square bracket operator, and that in fact is a process object, and so. If we look at the type of this thing, um, we look at type of P, it's a command pi pipeline object. Um, and so you can, after you've run it, you can go back and like get the string of the output or the error, er the standard error, or you can look at, you know, how long did this take? So you can look at the timestamps. Um, so because it, because we have Python, we have all this information, you have like basically everything you could possibly want. So we have this really rich object for interfacing with processes on top of all of that, including doing things like iterating through. So you can say things like for, um, like for line in, um, I think we want to do this operator. So the, the um, um, it, the exclamation point uh, 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 parentheses, and then you know we could say rather than we can intercept the 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 output and do things like line upper, and then everything's an upper. Oop, we probably wanted to strip it too, just so it's not so we don't get the double new line in there. Um, uh, and so. Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> there's a lot of like interesting things you can do with uh, the conch language, and there's it's pretty powerful. And um, I, oop, someone is calling me, but I do not. Oh, cannot talk right now. I'm on Twitch. You know that. Um, <laughs> um, and so it's pretty powerful language. Um, and yeah, just check out the docs and. Uh, we're on GitHub at conch slash conch, and so you can uh, just anytime you want to, you know, we we <laughs> we have a lot of commits in, and we've had a lot of issues and pull requests, and so we're always happy to you know take your issues and look at more pull requests and things like that. And so um, if you're looking for an alternative to some lesser shells. 
uh, <laughs> uh, hashtag no bias, um, then oh, please jump, jump in. We're, we're really happy to grow the community. So, um, okay, so that's kind of what conscious. Um, and we had this kind of old configuration method back to the code here a bit um, that uh, it was JSON based <laughs> rather than conch based. And it just ended up confusing people a lot. And so uh, we aim to remove it. Um, and so uh, let me tell her 15 minutes. Um, uh, and so, um, so we were just going to get, we got rid of it, but now there's a request for um, a, uh, for a deprecation warning in the pull request where I get rid of it. So I'll just say print, uh, well, I'll probably want to print things in color. So we've got this print color, um, print color thing. Yep, here it is. Uh, uh, Okay. Um, all right. Well, um, she needs my opinion ASAP. Uh, let me say two minutes then. <laughs> and then we can end the broadcast a little early, I guess. Um, so, um, oops, where was I? So back down at this function. Uh, so here's one of the things about conch that's also kind of cool is that we have all, we have this uh, mecha mechanism for doing color, um, and so we can say something like red uh, warning um, uh, old style configuration, um, and then we'll plus. Oh, only this part needs to be red, probably. Um, plus old config file name. Plus is no longer supported. Um, and then I guess I'll just do that. I'll add the plus, anyways. And then please migrate to conch RC. Um, I don't know, I can take a couple minutes break and then come back. I'll leave the recording going. Um, and then uh, if you guys have some questions or want to see something else in particular, uh, I'll be back in like a, just a couple minutes. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, there is a, there is some some stuff. Uh, there's like some countertop templating going on. Okay. Uh, all right. See you in like two minutes. Really sorry about this.
And I'm back. Sorry about that. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, what's happening? Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Um, okay. So I've got that. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and commit it. Does it. Did anyone have any questions? We're kind of at about 50 minutes here. Normally supposed to go till 12 or so. I'm happy to have any discussions or take any questions or anything like that, so. Uh, nope, I do not want to push to Master. That is a very bad idea. I will push <laughs> um, to other things. Okay. All right. Thanks, Edward. Yeah. Let's see. Just continue to work on this until. Okay. We can stay online for a few more minutes and just see. Uh, you know, the this delay time thing is pretty <laughs> annoying. I guess I'll I'll come to the end of it, in the sense that like, if you wanted to actually close out, right, you just have to go back to OBS and hit stop streaming, and so, uh, and then it's done. And then, like I said, once, um, if you want to upload it to YouTube for more permanent storage, that's pretty easy. You just have to remember to go back to Twitch within two weeks and do that. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's not super hard, actually. Uh, and some people are able to split their videos up um, into multiple videos before uploading. I'm not exactly sure how to do that. I don't think for like coding sessions, it's necessarily something that is really needed. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. So... Okay, um, getting more countertop news. Life doesn't stop for Switch, for Twitch. Let me just uh, <laughs> make that clear. So, all right. Well, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. Um, See, Tony, is that okay? Yes, no. <laughs> I hope this was valuable to everybody. Um, and yeah, I know it's kind of like, I, we did hit Jupiter, so at least it's got that going for it <laughs> in this uh, in this particular example. But yeah. so, yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching and um, and. Thanks a lot, Tony, for to Tony for inviting me to do this. It's kind of fun. Um, a few people have been poking me now to to do something like this for a while, um, and uh, oh, thanks, Edward. Yeah, and it's uh, because I think there's interest in people um, in having sort of more Twitch uh, coding sessions, and so I'm sort of looking at maybe trying to put something together where. Um, you know, it would be kind of cool to have a channel where just like there's always someone hacking on something, um, or at least a kid, you know, with some regularity, there's always something, someone trying to hack on, hack on something. And so if anyone's really interested in, in kind of doing that and, um, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, and, you know, I think it would be really cool to, to have some like a channel where people are, you know, just, you can see what people are doing and. Um, just have it go in the background, so, uh, uh, and probably pretty useful to new people, um, as well, so, uh, 
Okay. Well, thank you very much, and have a great day. And yeah, I hope I'll see some of you at some conferences in the summer. And you know, hit me up on Twitter and all that stuff. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.